All right, I am proposing a toast because I'm about okay. to pick the June Garber. That's you. <laughs> Cheers. It's me. How oh. are you? No, I, I, I need a scotch. The mm -hmm. wine, I Here, think the glass is in the other room. We're, we're clinking glasses. Are you ready? Yes. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Cheers. Mm. I'm waiting for my scotch. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this is Brian's wine. Yeah. He's so, gonna pour me some Glenfiddich. Okay, so that's just a prop, really. <laughs> that was a very No, nice no, thing. no, I'm gonna drink it. No prop. Listen, uh, you have done very well during uh, this, uh, may I say, boring time that, that, that a lot of people are having. I find a lot of musicians and artists, um, I mean, not it's not easy for anybody, but do you find that your life is a little easier because you love music and because you're you're still being able to be creative even if you're in lockdown? Um, I I think I've spent more time actually on myself as opposed to um, you know doing things for others and 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 being there for others. It that makes me feel quite selfish really because i've never ever spent the time on me um sort of uh exercising and and spending time honing my body it's it's very peculiar um so in that way it's been good because that's been my um uh, outlet as right. opposed to going out every night and watching people and doing gigs so it's it's unusual in that way solidarity sister in that way <laughs> i also i'm just not used to it but but like you i've found time to do more writing uh, yeah. Look at old photos and remember the old days. I know this is just a moment in time. This isn't the mm -hmm. rest of my life sitting around waiting for things to happen. It's just now. So I agree right. with you. There's kind of a way of... Now, we're also very lucky because we have roofs over our head and food. And like we, we're, we're lucky to be able to go to get through this. But I think right. artistically, I think it's really nice that artists have downtime. Charlie Hunter was saying he's coming up with new sounds because he can because he has mm. time for it. Mm. Yeah, you see, because um, when we're in the moment, which is what we always are, um, you don't really spend time on yourself. So as I say, it makes me feel very selfish, but I'm grateful. I have a great deal of gratitude um, that I have a roof over my head and I have food to eat and I can spend time listening to music and, you know, working on a new album. Um, COVID keeps interrupting, but it's right. going to happen. Yeah, right? this, this is the record that will take years to make. I heard two tracks already and yeah. you're doing this record with Lou Pamonti, right? Yes. Oh. Lou is oh, a, a, a total inspiration um, because his insight into the actual uh, whole feel of what is happening with the music and the vocalist kind of melts. And in that way, I find him so inspirational and so giving. Right. Because um sometimes it's just uh getting the tracks down getting the vocalist in but he he doesn't work like that no and lupa monti is one of the only producers i've met who constantly asks the question why or why bother or what does it mean to you he wants yeah. to get into the song but even more i think i think uh, even more into the artist he actually wants to get into your mind and go i want to do what you want to have happen but that requires a lot more uh, conversations. It's a, it's a closer relationship than a lot of producers have uh, with people they work with. 
I've never had this kind of um, give and take uh, 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 input and understanding of what my motivation is for actually choosing the song and what my um, subtext is for doing the song. And yeah. he totally, totally gets it. I mean, if you look at Windmills, yeah, your beautiful. Mind. That's your first single. I, I've already yeah. heard it. Yeah, it's great. And if you you just understand how hard he worked on getting the emotion that was within translated into the actual sound of what was happening, and he's very particular, very particular, right. and very and pays attention. Yeah. Well, he has what people he uses, like Drew Jaraka doing all those strings. The string Woo! on your record is unbelievable. But look yeah. at certain favorite people, and he goes, I know I can count on them. It, right. it's, it's, it's going to be more expensive to hire, but you're going to get it in one or two takes. Like, you're going mm -hmm. to get what you need. So, yeah, right. I look forward to your record. Now, uh, Jazz FM just released a song with a, with a single, like a, one song on a compilation album, and you and Jackie Richardson sound wonderful and really <laughs> it's really fun it's a fun it, it's a, it's a it's kind of a bittersweet song but you two are are having fun with it what was that like well it's such a different take on the song isn't it as to just, what just Luke was, wanting was like the judy garland kind of tv show with barbara streisand of two girls having a conversation and and that's not what the original was the original was like you know about the angst of a particular individual but this is like a sharing process you've and both been through the same thing you've both been through the mill you both had the same type of man in your life and yeah it sounds like you're comparing notes yeah uh, <laughs> uh, i think yeah. friendship from an old musical with b arthur that's what it kind of reminded me of of two women at a table talking yeah. to each other um, yeah. What are some of the other songs coming up? Have you decided yet on the album or are you still picking songs? Well, we're picking songs and it's the most delicious experience because Lou came up with some and I came up with some. And if it wasn't for the COVID, we'd be together in his studio um, going right over the yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and so we're waiting. The 11th is supposed to be um a date and if we get beyond that well we can start working on this uh on the other songs cool. and uh it, it's uh quite delicious the songs that we're looking at and who knows which ones yeah. will make it exactly which ones make the final cut yeah. you'll later um, you know he has input, I have input, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see if, how everything comes. If people are watching from America, um, they probably don't know anything about Factor, uh, the foundation, uh, foundation to Assist Canadian Talent on Record. Now, they've been around for decades helping musicians. Um, I understand they did something for you. Did they help finance this in any way? Absolutely. If it wasn't for Factor, I would not be doing this album. So it was a huge gift um, to be able to get some funding from Factor and to be able to move forward mm -hmm. uh, with this. And I, I was like stunned and amazed and grateful that yeah. this came through yeah well you're also going to be coming out on um a tiki collective record it's actually just out now and i had a little something to do with that um and um so your take on james bond um is it, it seems so natural shirley bassey can pass the torch on now because i think it's really great <laughs> is there something about you you could seduce james bond or you could be a villain and like go after him. You could kind of be <laughs> either of those characters, I think. <laughs> or you could be M, Judy Dench, get out of here. <laughs> well, 
it was it was a wonderful opportunity that you gave me because you you called me up and said hey we have this studio with a green screen and it, you know if you're available great if you're not okay and i was like Wow. It was two blocks wow. away from your house, too, which was kind of nice, right? <laughs> Just over on Queens Key at the Artscape. Just down the road. But you know what? When I, when I first thought about doing, I mean, I thought about doing a spy jazz record in 1997 with the Royal Jelly Orchestra. So it's taken me a while. But uh, thinking about it now, uh, you're, you were the very first person I thought of uh, to, to, to tackle some of these songs. Uh, because they're they're really good songs. A lot of Bond soundtracks have become iconic in music aside from the movie, right? right. So interesting though is uh, the world is not enough is not a song that Shirley Bassey did. It was from the band Garbage, um, but you gave it you gave it the same kind of serious take. Were you well, a fan of Bond movies? Well, yes. <laughs> But, but this this was so un Shirley Bessie, and and it was a gift to me, and I really studied the lyrics, and I really studied the feel of the song, that that you had the foresight to 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 bestow upon me, um, and I it was so incredibly deep and so painful mm. and and that i had to imbue the song with a, a depth of emotion that wasn't trite it right. was it was really gut-wrenching mm -hmm. um when it's you think about lyric. it yeah it's a really beautiful lyric yeah and i think that um jason did the most amazing um, work of capturing each moment. I mean, he dissected the song. Uh, you know what's really weird is Jason was given four takes of some video on a green screen, and everything else that happens in this is from his imagination. He I know every frame he put in all the backgrounds. That's he didn't find that online. That's his work, and. He can make low budget videos look like so much fun. There's one thing about JJ is nothing's ever boring. No. <laughs> right? It There's was, an it excitement was, to it. Yeah, it was stunning. I was captivated by it. And um, I can't even imagine what he'd do with uh, the song Windmills. Right. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Come Let's, hell or high water. There we go. The He's gonna be is there. my man. <laughs> You've laid down the gauntlet. Um, and also yeah. the recording its process itself. Uh, the Tiki Collective went into Number Nine Studio and made this bed track. And then John O'Grant took over with, oh. with Drew Dureka on strings again. There's that name. Um, so, so Jono also is going to be knee deep in the next few songs because you've got a few more. You're working on your record, but we've got a couple more spy jazz for you as well. Great. I mean, Jono is brilliant with The World Is Not Enough. His insight and understanding of what needed to be done astounded me. And, and so the finished product of what he did and, and what he thought of, like, you know, just me doing the harmony lines. Right. Uh, and, I feel lucky to be in the studio watching him work with singers, watching him with you, watching him with Irene Torres. He has a way of showing them idea of showing you all ideas, but it comes so fast. It's like yeah. it's lightning fast how it comes yeah. together. Yeah. I, I, I was really um, uh, amazed at at the points of of that he he connected to and said, "Wait, this is what needs to be here, and that's and the end needs to be this." Right. I mean, he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to yeah. be a lot of fun. You have a busy year ahead of you, and with all things like crossing <laughs> our fingers, who knows? But uh, with Lou Pamonti and with Jono, you're going to be in the studio a whole bunch in the next little while, as soon as yeah. we're allowed. Yeah. And I, I know this summer as much as I do. You just can't wait. 
to actually go out and see people. You've worked on yourself. You look beautiful. You feel good. <laughs> now let's go out and meet some people. Yeah. Hey. Hey, did you get your whiskey yet? I want to toast you before no, we No, here it is. Yay, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> there we go. Thanks cheers. so much, June Garber. I love catching up with you. Okay. You look God amazing. Bless. Cheers. Love you, Jancy. Bye.